Guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about three things. The first one is the accusation that people are labeling me with recently on social media that I'm spiraling or that I've fallen from grace or whatever that means. And with that, I'll wrap up some defensiveness stuff in there as well because I realize that's probably part of it. The second thing I'm going to talk about is suffering. And as we age into our 50s, the ability to suffer and what that means and how that can manifest itself onto my third point is the role we kind of have as, say, older dudes and dudettes into that younger generation. It seems to me they're really kind of reaching out right now for some kind of like adult ship, adulthood. Is that what like they want to see some some role models and shit. And I'm going to talk about a young dude called Mizzy. Um, which you may have seen on the media recently. So the first thing then. So a couple of dudes uh, recently, and I get a lot of pushback from guys in the military about what I'm doing. I don't know what it is, but they seem to think I'm spiraling. That term comes up, spiraling, or um, used to be somebody that was competent and now you're not, that kind of stuff. And I normally ignore it, but just recently I've been thinking about it a lot. Like, is that the case? Is it the case that I'm spiraling? What that means, I think, is that you leave the military and your life kind of falls apart. The reason I'm telling you this, guys, because it does lend in this second point a lot, suffering and intentional suffering, not not unintentional suffering. So the suffering that I think we need to, to manifest within ourselves in order to do something of, uh, of, of worth within our lives. And a lot of people never will do that, of course. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about me coming out uh, and it was a difficult time that's i've said that already so let's just say coming out of the military was a difficult time it is for everyone and i think with the posts i put on social maybe people have kind of seen that you know i'm not working for a defense prime i was sacked for a def from a, a defense subsidiary i was sacked uh, i lost my security clearance because of stuff i'd put on youtube about the discrimination of white men into the royal air force you know how that works guys we've done that before i lost the job and that impacted my wife quite a bit she was like can't you just fucking get a job and do something like normal people and so i, I started a business and I run that business now and the business earns roughly the same bit less actually to be fair with you guys but it's my own time isn't it you know what I mean that's more important and that's how I feel about it so I think when people say that you're spiraling uh, I think in a sense they're saying that you're doing something different to them and I also think it comes from a place of uh, misunderstanding that we have to be in like we come from a conformist service and then you come outside and you do something creative and creativity and conformity don't sort of sit hand in hand Building a business is not something that you'd expect necessarily someone coming out of a military structure to do. And I did build a business. I'm not saying it's the best business in the world. I'm still building it, you know what I mean? And some ancillary stuff to it. But I'm not in BA Systems as a business defense or business um, developer, or I'm not flying jets in Saudi Arabia, or I'm not out doing all these other things that you'd kind of expect people to be doing when they left the military. It's just not me. And it's not that I didn't want to do that necessarily, it's just I kind of want to experience a bit more life than sitting in a cockpit forever. I haven't actually flown since I left the military about six years ago, other than on airlines going to holidays. And so maybe it might look like I've spiraled. But let me tell you what I have done. Because I, I sometimes I was thinking, fuck, have I spiraled? Fuck, you know, am I that guy, that veteran, that, you know what I mean? Shit, that says nasty things on the internet, whatever. And I had to really think about it. And I'm quite an open guy when it comes to the way I feel like I talk about it openly like on this kind of stuff and I'm happy to hum humiliate myself completely you know if it helps other people get some traction in their lives I think that's important so what I've done since I left the military is I started a business I did campaign actively against the discrimination of white men entering the military because I knew if it's going to be white men it's going to be black men it's going to be Hindu Sikhs it's going to be anything you know what I mean it's going to be Muslim dudes it's going to be anything if you discriminate against anyone and because I because I taught in the military flying fast jets and it was based on a meritocracy I couldn't believe we were going to employ people and lower that standard and that's what we're doing the police force is doing the same thing we all know that of course uh, everyone's doing it. fire service everyone airlines are doing it fuck when you get on an airliner now you're not flying with the best captain you're flying with someone that came in more than likely on some some kind of aspect of DI than, than it would be about merit. I, I'm, I'm just saying, it's one of those things. I don't think we can stop it now either way. What else have I done? Yeah, I built a business. I've got an active marriage that I'm still sustained. I, I've been with the same woman now since I was 18 years old. I'm 49 now. And I've been married for, I think about, I don't even know now, 2005. Do the math on that one, Davies. I can't really do it. But it's almost coming up, what, 20 years? I guess 18, 20 years. The marriage is a good marriage. Now, I had to invest a lot in that. My wife has always invested. But when I left the military, that shit was falling apart 110%. Many, many reasons for that. But you come out of the military with a, with a wife who supported you in the military or a husband supporting the military, they get a massive say in what you do. And when you combat that, you fight it, 
things do that pretty quickly. You can imagine me going, yeah, I'm out of the military, now I'm gonna to go to Saudi Arabia. She would have blown up. So it's not about my time now, it's about her time. She's a good woman, yeah, she's good. She's a good woman. And I'm lucky to have her at stuff and she's lucky to have me, that's the truth. Uh, I stopped drinking. Uh, 15 months ago, I stopped drinking. There's not a day that doesn't happen where I don't think about it, but it's in control and I'm happy with it. I'm down here now at the rowing club and I was gonna go out rowing, I went out rowing yesterday. Um, I'm working out a lot now, a lot more, and built my own gym. So if I'm spiraling, I like to think I'm spiraling upwards, not downwards. But I guess that doesn't look good to a lot of people. Hear the comments, guys. Let me know what you think. I guess it must look to other people as if I'm not in a good place. And that's fine. I, I am. But it's fine if it doesn't. I'm happy to chat this stuff through. And that's my first real point is... What is what someone else looks at you and what else someone else sees in you isn't necessarily the truth But it doesn't rob them of what they think it doesn't stop them having an opinion They can have that but how we react to that is important Of course, I was reacting it to thinking fuck am I spiraling is my life falling apart And I had to do some kind of deep dive over that last four days and I thought shit I educate people every day in my school. I was educating people this morning for two hours Australian dudes in fact um, They had a great sortie they had a real valuable time in shadowlands and i'm proud literally of myself for being able to do that and be able to uh, work these people into some real credible um, fast jet flying training that's done in a virtual reality world i made that no one else made it i made it and yes i would have made it for aerialists who i was working for but i did leave aerialists and i voluntarily voluntarily left aerialists and i've still got good relationships with the company and i'm still an investor in that hopefully they do great work second thing about suffering them and that's gonna leave me in my third point i do think as we get older as well we need to embrace that notion of suffering doing things we don't want to do but we've got to kind of do them anyway that might be stopping drinking that might be hitting the gym that might be eating healthily like you can eat healthily all week and go and have a Big Mac meal and you're adding 2,000 calories on and that's going to upset your week. And Yeah, it'll be nice to have that Big Mac meal. It would be. It'd be nice to have that chocolate. It would be. And I'm not immune to that shit. Don't get me wrong. However, the more we embrace suffering, and people will say that's the wrong word to use. 110% I agree with you. There is another word we could use as opposed to suffering. So whack it down in the comments if you know what that word is because I struggle with it. You know, it's it, not necessarily suffering. I feel I'm suffering. Especially with the, um, the stopping the drinking, I feel I am suffering. However, there's probably a better word we can use. I don't know what it is. Hardship. Um, I say ambition, anything like that. You've probably got a very decent word you're using, guys. And if you give me a decent word, I promise I'll use that word next time. I see it as suffering. I mean, I'm a Catholic. I've got to, right? You know what I'm saying? But um, I feel that the more we do that, the more we embrace that hardship, the easier the hardship becomes and then the better we become. Now, a great philosopher, a guy called Wes Watson said, uh, consistency is what you consistently see. Anyone that knows Big Wes, drop a, a like down the bottom there. He's done a lot of good for a lot of people. So consistency is what you consistently see. If you're consistently seeing the inside of McDonald's, sweets, bad food, all that kind of shit, that's what you're gonna become. You're gonna become that guy that eats all that stuff the whole time. If you're constantly in gyms, you're gonna become that gym dude. Now I'm saying you haven't gotta go into a gym and have a massive workout. Just be in that gym, literally go to that gym, stretch it out, find a machine you like working on. I just bought a ski erg. Ski erg, that's a pretty cool machine. Rowing machine, pretty cool machine. Little bike things, pretty cool machines. You can sit on those things, you can watch a film, listen to a podcast. If you can listen to a podcast anyway, you may as well be on one of those machines, just sat at that heart rate. So consistency is what you consistently see. I look at that as a little bit like kind of suffering, like I've got to do something that's something I don't particularly want to do. I'm not a natural gym money, right? I'm not. You may not see that. And the reason I say this, guys, the reason I say embracing this hardship is the important thing is because there's young guys out there like this Mizzy chap you may have heard of. He's just come out of prison and he says he's looking to do some good in the world now. And I really hope he does. Probably come from a broken home. I think he was fatherless. I don't think he had a father in the home. So he hasn't ever seen anything like that. And I think, I think these young people who are really walking into a messed up world, you've got the government looking to go to a third world war. Now, you know how that is, guys. I've talked about it before. They need to know that there are some adults in the fucking room. There are some people that are not gonna tolerate this shit that's coming down from the government that are gonna actually say, look, I don't wanna be doing press ups in the rain in the car park, but I'm doing it anyway. I don't wanna pick up litter as I walk to my nearest co-op. I want the government to do that, but it's not doing it. I'll pick up the litter as I walk into my co-op. 
Um, I, I don't want to be treating people nicely in the street. I'm having a bad day. I, you know, I, I don't want to be saying hello to people. I'm going to say hello to people. I'm going to say thank you, police officer, for the work you're doing. I'm going to, when I go to my doctor, I'm going to thank my doctor for him being or her being there, being a doctor. I'm going to make sure that people in shops, I'm going to say thank you for that. I'm going to say thank you, please, the whole time. I'm going to open doors for old ladies and women. I'm going to do that. I'm going to stand up when a woman enters the room. That's just me. I'm going to do that, right? And then that's going to rub off on the society because we've only got one society, guys. It's British society. I don't care whether you're a Sikh Muslim. I don't care whether you're, you're, I don't care who you are. If you're British and you're living here and you want to live here, that's fine. Immigration is going to sort itself out. We can do that. We're going to have a conversation about immigration at some point, believe me, especially as it's pushing up house prices for young people. And that's a real, real, real tragedy. Both ends has pushed up house prices, of course. You know, it's awful. Unless we get young people onto that housing ladder and we get them jobs, they're never going to be able to contribute actively to society. They're not going to want to. I wouldn't. I fully understand that. I work with young people every single day. So I think that suffering that we have to do as people like our age, you know, 40s, 50s, that kind of stuff, even guys in the 30s, that will reflect on the younger generation. And the younger generation are a good generation. No difference to us. They've got that social media thing, fair enough, and I feel they have been left down. But they are looking for people to lead them. That Mizzy guy is looking for role models. Of course he is. No one wants to be in jail. That guy doesn't want to be in jail. And no one wants to be miserable thinking they're living in a society where there's pressures all over them. So maybe we have to do things that aren't palatable for us because actually, in reality, we're doing them for other people. And I think when we get that kind of mindset of, yeah, I'm going to the gym, not because of me. Fuck that. I'm going to the gym because my kids will see me going to the gym. Or I'm, I'm repaving the driveway, or taking the trash out, or doing all these kind of jobs because my kids and my wife will see me doing it. Or my husband will see me uh, eating healthily. Now, we're not leaving people behind. We're taking people with us. That's all. hope I've addressed that, guys. I don't want to be a... I don't want to be weird about that spiraling thing. I just don't think I am spiraling or I did ever spiral. I think I kind of spoke out my mind about something that I cared deeply about. And that was merit in the British Armed Forces. And I think for that, I got pretty much a kick in. Not the fucking first time we had a kick in, to be fair, mate. You know what I mean? But, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing. But sometimes we've got to do things that are uneasy. I kind of hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments below. And also, let's be realistic about this. If you think that's, if you think I've, I mean, I'll post some comments up here, whatever that people have said. But if you think, Tim, you fucked your life completely, I'm interested in that comment. I don't think I have. And I'm happy that, you know, 15 months clear of alcohol and it's not easy. But if it was easy, I'll probably be drinking again, wouldn't I? So the one thing stopping me drinking is the fact it's actually still quite hard. Um, and I'm using the gym and I've got a successful marriage and I run a business. But I realize as well, that I'm still probably quite vulnerable when it comes to that, else I wouldn't be making a fucking video. So let's be honest about it, all right? So I'm probably still quite vulnerable. I still see these guys out in Saudi earning some big fucking money and think, shit, I should have done that, flying jets. Yeah, probably, but my marriage would probably fall apart. I'll probably still be going away at weekends, the bar and getting a smash on. Guys, look, I really appreciate your time because that's what it is. And I appreciate the comments that you leave down here. And if you have a better word for that suffering, that contribution we need to make society, there's a good word, isn't it? Then write that down there and let me know what you think. And how are you doing it? Or are you? Or are you not? Are you in the gym? Are you eating healthily? Are you trying to keep that marriage together? I understand if you're not, guys. Let me know what to make a video on. I'll, I'll try and do that for you. I just want to say I really appreciate everyone that I come into contact with, especially in the comments, especially from the emails. I feel that there's a real society out there that is looking upwards like we fucking need to do something here and we're going to have to be the ones that do it because the government's not going to do it. The government's acting like an absolute bunch of kids. Oh, man. How do we get like this? How do how did this happen to us? I don't know. Maybe we are. Maybe we're the solution. Maybe society's solution. Guys, I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks for listening. Tim Davis, Fast Ship Performance.